Section 1 1 Angles. Uh, before we get started with actually the, the trigonometry of the course, let's go back and review some items from maybe a, a high school geometry course that you've had. Uh, let's go over some vocabulary terms line, segment, ray, angle, vertex, initial side, terminal side. Uh, in geometry, trigonometry, uh, what exactly is a line? A line is a set of points that goes on indefinitely in uh, two directions. So anytime you need to uh, to um, to write a line, make sure or, or note a line. Make sure you have the arrowheads on uh, on both ends, indicating that it goes on forever in two directions. Uh, what is a segment? Uh, a segment is almost like a line. However, uh, it has endpoints. Uh, it does not go on forever uh, and ever and ever in both directions. It has a finite length. So we can find the length of a segment. However, we cannot find the length of a line because it goes on forever. Usually with a segment, we name the endpoints, capital letters, so we could call this segment AB or segment uh, BA. Uh, likewise with the line, we can pick two points, any two points on that line, uh, call those two points uh, maybe point C, point D, and we have uh, what was what we could refer to as line CD or line DC. A ray starts at a point and goes on forever and ever in one direction. So it has an end point, but then it has, you know, infinite, uh, goes on in, indefinitely in, in, in one direction. Um, we always name a ray by its end point first. So this must be called ray AB, not BA. Uh, ray BA would start at point B and go in A's direction forever and ever and ever. Okay. Let's talk about angles. Angles are formed by the intersection of two rays. So let's say we have ray AB. Ray AB. And let's say that we have ray AC. So notice that the two rays must share common endpoint, and that endpoint is point A. The intersection of two rays we call an angle. And there are a couple different ways we can name an angle. I could call this angle angle BAC, or I could call this angle CAB. Rule of thumb though is that the vertex of the angle, that common endpoint, which we call the vertex of the angle, must be the middle letter. So angle BAC, angle CAB, um, name the same angle. I also could just call this if I wanted angle A. Why? Because it's the only angle that has A as its vertex. The minute I would introduce another ray that would have A as an endpoint, let's say uh, we have uh, ray a AD now added to the picture, I can no longer just say angle A because we have actually three angles, one, two, and the big angle, right, all three of those share uh, vertex A, so I would not know which one that you're talking about if you just said angle A. So there I'm forced to use three-letter notation, BAD or DAC, uh, etc. Finally, that brings us to uh, initial side, terminal side. So on the XY plane, XY grid, we're going to have two rays. One ray will be positioned uh, on the x-axis, which we call the terminal side, or the I'm sorry, the initial side. And then I want you to imagine taking that that ray and rotating it counterclockwise until we have uh, established some degree measure or angle measure, which we'll talk about in more detail. Angle measures later on, but we're going to have some ray starting here at the initial side and then we'll rotate this ray counterclockwise until we have some position in mind and now that ray we call the terminal side so let me put in red the initial side and we're going to counterclockwise rotate this angle this ray until we stop at some angle measure theta so the red ray we call the initial side and the uh, blue ray we call the terminal side Let's actually talk about the degree measure. 
2000 BC, Babylonians developed a degree measuring system. One degree represents 1 360th of a rotation. And then we have the various types of angles that I'm sure you're, you're already familiar with. An acute angle is an angle whose measure is between 0 degrees and 90 degrees, not including 90 degrees. So anywhere from 0 to 90 degree angle up to 90, we have an acute angle. If the angle is 90 degrees, if the angle is 90 degrees, we have what's called a right angle. Obtuse angle, if you are between 90 and 180 degrees, you have what's called an obtuse angle. And a straight angle is equal to 180 degrees. So therefore, it would look like a straight line, which is why we call it a straight angle. If you think about rotating that initial side 180 degrees, here would be like the initial ray, here would be the terminal ray, so it would just form a straight line, which is why we call it a straight angle. Complementary angles. Two angles are complementary, or three angles are complementary, if the sum of those angles is 90 degrees and angles are supplementary if their sum is 180 degrees. The way I think of it is 90 comes before 180, C comes before S. Complementary angles sum 90, supplementary angles sum up to uh, 180 degrees. Let's take a look at an example. Find the measure of each angle. So we're given that the, the big angle is a right angle, donate, uh, denoted by the, uh, the box that we're seeing here. Find the measure of each angle. Let's find the measure of this angle and this angle. So I know that the whole thing is 90, so that implies that 6m plus 3m is equal to 90. 6m plus 3m gives us 9m, and that's equal to 90. Divide both sides by 9 m is equal to 10. Now that's not the answer to the question. We've got to find each individual angle. So if m is 10, this is a 60 degree angle, and this is a 30 degree angle, letting m be 10. Uh, these two angles will be complementary. Why? Because they add up to give you 90. Here we have a straight angle and an array. Uh, we have two angles, uh, adjacent angles. Find the, find the uh, measure of each angle again. So we know that 4k plus 6k adds up to be 180, forming the straight straight line, the straight angle. 4k and 6k make 10k equal to 180. Divide both sides by 10. k is 18. Now we'll substitute k uh, equals 18 back into the two values. And 6 times 18 gives us 108 degrees. And 4 times 18 gives us 72 degrees. And you can see if we add these two together, uh, we get 180. These two angles would be supplementary angles. Minutes and seconds. Um, portions of a degree, or fractional part of a degree, have been measured with minutes and seconds. So we define one minute, one with a with a, it looks like a quotation mark, a single quotation mark, one minute is equal to one sixtieth of a degree, or it takes sixty minutes to make one degree. And then we can break that down even farther. Uh, one second is a sixtieth of a minute, or one thirty-six hundredth of a degree. For example, perform each calculation. Let's take 51 degrees, 29 minutes, and add on to it 32 degrees, 46 minutes. So we're going to add the degree part together first. 51 degrees plus 32 degrees make 83 degrees, and 29 minutes plus 46 minutes give us uh, 75 minutes. 
However, you know, this value cannot be larger than 60. 60 minutes make a whole degree. So we have 60 minutes inside the 75 minutes. So that's an additional degree. So we'll bump that up to 84. And 75 minus 60 is uh, 15 minutes. So 51 degrees, 29 minutes, plus 32 degrees, 46 minutes, gives us 84 degrees, 15 minutes. Let's look at the subtraction problem. We have 90 degrees minus 73 degrees, 12 minutes. I'm going to write this vertically. Um, we have 90 degrees minus 73 degrees, 12 minutes. And if you remember from, uh, from subtraction, we can borrow. So I'm going to borrow a whole degree. So I'm going to make this 89 degrees. I'm going to borrow that degree and write it as 60 minutes, allowing us now to subtract. 60 minutes minus 12 minutes is 48 minutes. And 89 degrees minus 73 degrees is 16 degrees. So our answer is 16 degrees, 48 minutes. And then you may be asked throughout the course, uh, not the duration of the course, but early on in the course, you may be asked to convert uh, degrees, minutes, seconds to a simple decimal degree. Change the, uh, what, we're, what we're doing is we're, we're writing this as 74 point some decimal degree, uh, like, we, like we're seeing here. And then you may be asked to convert a decimal degree back into minutes, degrees, uh, degrees, minutes, seconds. So I would strongly recommend, for the sake of time, using uh, your graphing calculator to uh, do those conversions. And I'll show you uh, on the TI-83 how we can do that uh, from one to the other. So, so we have uh, 74 degrees, so we need to enter the 74. And then there's an angle submenu. We can go in and find the symbols for degree and minute. Now, I don't know why they do this, but degree and minute are located here. And then the notation for seconds is is located right here the green double mark so you'd have to hit your alpha button first and then use the uh, the notation there for seconds I don't know why they don't have it in the uh, angle measure um, menu but let's convert 74 then I'll go into the me uh, angle menu choose degrees oh by the way you want to also make sure uh, hitting the mode button make sure your calculator is in degree mode before we uh, start so I'm uh, making sure it's in degree mode. We have 74 degrees. Now we'll go 8 minutes and then 14 seconds. And we want to convert that to decimal degree. All I've got to do is hit my enter button. And you could round this off to whatever it needed to be. This would be equivalent to 74.14 degrees. To go in the other direction, we'll enter the the uh, degree part of uh, the value in. So 34.817, go back into the angle measure menu, hit the uh, degrees, and we want to convert this to degrees, minutes, seconds. So once we have that value in, in decimal form, go back into the angle menu and choose convert to degrees, minutes, seconds. And you can see our answers, 34 degrees, 49 minutes, and 1.2 seconds.